How are we doing, Noodles? What's up, guys? I heard the spirited debate going on about – now, I, I'm coming in late, but is it because the team is winning lately? Now, what the hell do you do with some of these players, correct? 19-11-4 since that miserable outdoor game that had them off to a 2-7-1 and one start. That, that That's a tidy run of play. Yeah. I mean, I, I did the game, you know, I was in studio with that. What felt like a month ago was that last week, <laughs> you yep. know, like literally it felt Tuesday. Like for, for me, I've been in eight different places since I was in Ottawa last night, flew back to Toronto this morning, but um, you know what? Like I was thinking about it. You've infused some young players already in. So this is the, you know, you're kind of having the, not the retool on the fly, not what the New York Rangers did, but remember the Rangers just said, they sent out that letter. Yeah. Hey guys, you know, nothing to see here for the next four years. We're doing a, uh, you know, we're going to do a rebuild and they were able to turn it pretty quickly. And now Shister can help with that because, you know, he had the all world season and they went and signed Panera and they had some, they box had, arrived. Yeah. Yeah. They had, they had, they had some player pieces. I would argue that Connie still has to, I heard the second rounder argument because you, you're right. Like, what is the value of that? And there's an act, actual analytic value of like, okay, this second rounder has a chance to, you know, 21% chance of playing and all of that stuff. You know, I, I've heard this argument too. I mean, is Iggy the greatest player in, in Flames history? I, I would say he is, right? He's the greatest right. Flame, yeah. Okay. I, I can't remember. What did they get for Iggy? Nothing. First and uh, two college prospects. Nothing panned out. Kenny Agostino, Ben Hanowski, and a pick that turned into Morgan Klimchuk. So the the hockey news can't find any three of those guys, right? Like it's no. literally not in the NHL. <laughs> so like that's that's where I'm thinking. Like, and I, I'm not advocating to keep these players, but I, I I'm I'm trying to figure out as to what is the marketplace. And then what do you get for them to to fill the team if you're that close to the playoffs? If you're 1911 and whatever moving forward, you go in on this team is my thoughts and you don't worry. Jesus. But I also think and I said it the last two days, I also think it's a committee team with a hell of a goaltender which you've seen work yeah. before. And I think you can actually move even a Lindholm we talked about yesterday and the day before. He's good. He's real good, but he's not nine million good. I think you can move that guy and do another trade, or in that process, bring a guy in to slot in for an, as another centerman, and and fill that spot, and yes. still have just as good a chance in the playoffs because you're not Lindholm's not wowing you with offensive ability. He's not going to run your power play. You don't. He's not a focal point for the other team to shut down. He's just a real solid, real good player. Well, they've got Kadri, they've got Backland, and if they can get just another guy that can play, I think you can move a couple of these pieces and not cut your feet out as far as making the playoffs. I don't disagree because what you're looking at is what Lindholm brings and then what is the next guy who comes in? How much is that gap, if mm -hmm. at all? I mean, and, you know, recency bias, I – I did the Ottawa Colorado game last night and then I watched the the Flames Arizona and like I Bowen Byron like he's available right I I think right like I, I mean you you hear whispers that Colorado wants to beef up their up front and he might be a guy that that could be an odd man out just based on like McCarr's not going anywhere um you know Gerard's come back and and he looked really good Devontae's is there. Like they might just have a lot of defensemen that they could part with. I'm not saying Lynn home for Bowen Byram. I'm not, I don't, I'm not trying to patch anything, but what I'm saying is there are trades out there that can help your team get better with some of these players that we're talking about the Tanevs, the, the Lynn homes, you know, who else? Uh, Hannafin, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I think at some point you do have to sign. If you had to sign one of them, is it Hannafin? He's younger. For me, it is. 
Yeah. yeah. And they need D more badly. Um, I, I do think it's a little bit silly to suggest that you could just have some guy tossed in a deal that could play 21 minutes like last no, night. Lindholm but you did. don't need 21 minutes. You're not looking for exact. You're looking for well, Lindholm. Right. So, uh, you Lindholm's can get not a third change. line center, but uh, it's going to be a drop from Lindholm to the guy you get tossed in in that deal. Let's just acknowledge that. A hundred percent. Like yeah. what, what you probably would do is ask Kadri to to kind of slide into different roles you'd ask Backlund to you know t- absorb either some of those minutes or some of that responsibility but it is I would argue this this record what did you say 1911-4 let's yep. just 34 games since that 1911-4 uh, was Lindholm the catalyst or is he just a, a good player in, in part just of it? Just a player in part of it right. and for a lot of it not a good not I wouldn't he's never been a bad player no. he's not a focal player though oh Oh, hopefully he can hear us oh at least. Did Jack just kill him? Jack just arrived here. Jack's alive, guys. <laughs> Did Jack yeah. kill him? I got a Jack update. He's alive. Did you kill um, Noodles, Jack? What happened? Jack, is he? There. We Did Noodles die? There he is. There he is. He's back. Okay, resurrect. Sorry, guys. Continue. Lindholm's been okay for most of it and good for part of it. Right. So, I, I mean, like, if this is a by-committee team, what you do is you plug, plug and play, but you're asking – somebody else to absorb some of his minutes or some of his responsibility. And you, you kind of, you put the pieces together. I, I butchered the guy's name. He scored the game winner last night. What Sharon Govich. Sharon you got it. Nailed it. Got, Nailed there, it. There's guys where I look on my, my sheet and I'm like, I hope he does nothing tonight because I don't want to say <laughs> his name on TV because I, I can't do it. Like last night. A rough month for that. If everyone's saying his name a lot. Well, I know, and he's been awesome. But Sharon Govich, like, you know, there's a guy that you find value in a trade where, you know, Toffoli had a career high and he was at the peak there. And you go younger, maybe a chance, somebody who needs an opportunity to expand, somebody who's maybe not in a top six, who could get a top six. You know, the the biggest lesson learned on some of this stuff is, you know, William Carlson, you know, it, 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 you know, players like that and Riley mm-hmm. Smith that went in expansion, they got bigger roles. If you can find, and that's where your scouting, your pro scouting has to be dialed in is who around the league on some of these teams that are value, valuing the players that you are willing to sell. How are these young prospects going to help your, your team? And maybe with opportunity, Sharon Govich was a prime example. He scored 20, a couple of years back. Wasn't going to be on the first power play. They've kind of pushed past him. Now he slides in. He looks like a pretty good player for the Flames. So let's think about this then. Boston's been linked to Lindholm, whether that's real or just us seeing a fit. Ditto Colorado. You mentioned Byram in Colorado. Okay. How about this Poitra kid or whatever his name is in Boston that made the team that went to the World Juniors? He's a center. There is a deal where the guy can come in and give you center ice minutes, and you've got another theoretical decade of him as a pro, not – you know, the expensive well, 30 plus years that Lindholm's going to be getting on his next deal. Like, w- would that be a framework that makes sense to you? It would, but here's the thing. I- I'll be honest. It, I-, I feel like, is that too much? Like, what's Lindholm's value? He's a rental. Like, you'd, you'd have to have a an extension in place or something. Boston's not giving him nine million. Like, you know what I mean? Like, No I, one's I, giving him nine. He knows that too. Like, that right. ship sailed. Yeah. So, Boston... So- They'd be doing the reverse that Calgary would be doing. Is so here's Poitra. How far are we going to Lindholm? Right, right like, now, is, like is their that, windows now though, right? Like I know it's Marchand I know. and McAvoy. Like it's they don't have. No, I get it. I yeah. I understand. I still think Boston. I swear to God, I saw Patrice Bergeron skating the other day. I swear to God, <laughs> he's just showing up at the deadline and going, "Yeah, you know what? Maybe I'll play for the stretch here." Yeah. I swear to God, he's doing that. I don't. Maybe I'm wrong, but I've That's seen him deadline. more. Then often skating, like I've just kind of, you know, he's around the dressing room. The guys, there's always on Twitter, like it's, you know, Boston, <laughs> hey, there's, there's Bergeron in the room. I'm like, what the hell's he doing? He's retired. Well, he's just, yeah, he was dropping the puck at the game the other night. He yeah, was, like, he was just, dropping the puck. That's all. It's, it, yeah, it's just, ceremonial. Yeah. But, uh, but I, I agree. Like there is a marketplace for him. I think Colorado would be a fit. I think uh, Boston, I, I think there's the several hockey. teams. If a hockey trade's available, like I don't know, is Byram for Lindholm a, a trade that anyone would make, or is I don't think really... Colorado would make that trade. I yeah, know. and then other people are saying it'd be Byram plus. Like we really don't know. Byram's a good young toolsy defense. I, I mean, would that's make exactly I, what the Flames uh, if need. I'm the Flames, I make that trade all day because I think you fill a hole with that, and then you can deal with Hannafin from a position of strength. If he also wants Tanev, to, yeah, 
right? But, but I guess my my point is is Lindholm is a rental. I think Byram's worth more. That that's my point. Is I think Byram is going to be if he's not, is it? I think he's a top pairing. All right, player. I've got a deal: Lindholm and Vladar for. Uh... There you go, Byram. The thing about it with Colorado would be too though, they is they've is. been so good. Yeah. We know that maybe Byram is going to be a great player and Byron for Lindholm, but what makes us better right now this year? They got to win a cup. That's that's what they're chasing. They're not worried about how, well, who's going to be better in four years, right? We see teams yeah, do this every what single other teams year. are offering as well, too, right? Yeah. It's not like they've only got one team to negotiate with. So yeah. they can go and say, hey, who wants Byram? And the Florida Panthers call and they say, yeah, we do. We'll give you this yeah. and this or I, I, wonder or whatever well, like they don't want picks maybe but whatever it is they're gonna take anyway I, you I, know the I, thing I, about the, sorry jay i was gonna say the thing about this is and you've been on this show so you know this right. we're very smart we're so very smart, smart and and we're always right yeah always so so here's the thing and i, I, I talk to red every single day and there's a line that you cross and we've talked we talk about it where Conroy will be on this same line where it's, I know the team's playing well, but I know, I know what they are. It's great that they're winning games, but we're going to be rebuilding. And then you get a little bit closer and it's, hmm, maybe this team's playing a little bit better than even I thought, but I still know that this, that's great. They're playing well. I'm happy for the coach, you know, first year coaches is so great for Huska, but watching Rhett the last few days, the last week to 10 days, with how well this team is playing. And it's not just results. It's how they're playing. Mm -hmm. It's like, hmm, am I rethinking what I think about this team? Because just the three of us across the board, we're all right. And I put myself there too. They're good, but, you know, we're rebuilding. You watch what they did last night. Yes, it's Arizona, but still two goals when they, they look dead and buried. Came back, tied it. Went to overtime, great shot, win. Went into Arizona, pumped them. Went into Vegas, yes, Vegas is shorthanded. Was by far and away the better team on the ice. I'm just wondering, I think we're all wondering, is this team better than we thought? And you don't need to be the number one seed. And Look at Boston last year. There's a lot of, you can be a five or a six or whatever and get in. And with goaltending, holy shit, what they can happen? What you just said is the key there, too. All that stuff, they're playing well, and they got the Vesna goaltender. When did Florida start to play well? They snuck in. They're down 3-1, and all of a sudden, yeah. the bobber showed up, and he kicked some ass for almost yeah. two months. No, I mean, I've said it a million times. This league should just be called goalie because if you if you got one, you're, you're in good shape. If you don't, then you watch your team just melt every night, and you try and outscore the problems. You know, I think that – the balance or the, the, the debate we always have right here is you you do the on paper test. Like I always used to do the whiteboard test. You do, you know, you walk into a manager's office and he's got the, the, his roster on a whiteboard. And then he's got everybody else's roster on the whiteboard. So when you start to do the, the overlay, the matchups, okay, are they better than team X, team Y, all of that, but you have to be playing better. And that's what Rhett's coming back to. And 04, it was you had two superstars, and then it was by committee. You had some really, really good players, right? So the goalie's going to give you a chance. I didn't hear the report. Like, is he is he playing tomorrow, or is he like out a couple of days? It's day to day, so it seems minor. They're being cautious, I'd suggest. Yeah. So, but outside of that, like the goalie gives you a chance, and this team is gelling, and it's all right for players. Like, think look, Blake Coleman's come come to life. Like, you, you know, you look at some of the players, like he helps Tampa win a Stanley cup. Like there's a reason, why, like, you know, he's a hell of a player and, and maybe it took him a while to settle in here, but like, he's, he's really showing what he's capable of. Like, I think they're better than people are giving them credit for, but, but how much better? That's well, my question. And I think this week is a great week to figure that out. They got Toronto and then they got, Oh my God. Uh, Edmonton, Edmonton, Edmonton on yeah. Saturday night okay boys things are great beat them it'd be yeah, nice to have markstrom for that test too right it i don't sure know what they're going to sure but would. yeah well it would be nice to have markstrom like he he needs to get over the the edmonton thing you know and that's 
you know, that would help because I'm, I'm, you guys know, I'm a huge Marky fan. I, I, I love the guy. I think he's a hell of a goaltender. Um, you know, and I hope that he's all right because they do, they, they should need him. They're going to get a pissed off leaf team. And, you know, I'm, I'm in Toronto. I can see the fire burning outside my window right now. So four blown leads in a row. If people yeah. aren't up to speed, it's we, have a a thing disaster. Show, we have a thing on our show called the underpants cam. Where the, you know <laughs> a, a zero is no skid mark and a fifty is a skid mark. Fifty in Toronto. Oof. In Toronto right now, the underpants cam is at a fifty. Like yeah. there are skid marks left and right because <laughs> I, it's just people are just perplexed of what's going on. Like it, so I don't know. But it's the Leafs will be a crabby team tomorrow, and and you're right. This is a big test for them. These, you know, you, you're passing markers. You go into Vegas, you know, you, you know, Vegas is shorthand. It doesn't matter. Whoever you play, you've got to beat. But that's right. They were dead in the water last night. That kind of looked like a, you know, a game that they lose like 3-1. Well, you know? And those are the games that kill you at the end of the year. Right. It was, you know, you can almost go, yeah, well, they're a little flat. They were on the road. They've been playing well. It's just one of those games. You give up those two points, and and, and and come April, you go, son of a... Yeah. Like, we just lost to Chicago. We come home. Arizona's better than probably we give them credit for, but yeah. still a team where you're thinking, if we want to climb and get in a playoff spot, we got to have the two points. They're yeah. sitting there 2 nothing, down 2 nothing with half a period left, and they tie it and win it in overtime. Those two points are massive. Like, yeah. they, they those are the ones that add up at the end of the year that you maybe didn't think you were going to have that give you that chance to get in. Well, but it comes back to, you know, the, the debate we're having, do you continue on? And there is some time still for Connie to sort through this, right? You, you know, it's a nice stretch here. You know, maybe they continue to climb and they, they, they even gel more, or maybe there's a, we'll call it a market reset where you're like, okay, you know, we, we kind of know they're going to be on the cusp. I, I still think you can have the best of both worlds. You can still trade players but bring in younger guys to push up. What do you think they have to do, though? Because last year and the years prior, like we've seen, so if you go back over the history of the last 20 years of the Flames, again, La leaves for zip. Giordano leaves for zip. Kiprasov leaves for zip. 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 Like they've Johnny. never got anything returned, and there's no guarantees even when you make a trade that you're going to get pieces that right. fit in. Like the in But what we did learn is you can't let Guys like Gaudreau walk for nothing. Right. Giordano walk for nothing, right? Like, Connie has to do something. Yeah. He can't go into the playoffs with this squad of unrestricted guys and just go, yeah, well, we were going for it. Right. He's, now, he's, get, he, he's made the statement himself. He said almost, the same thing himself in his right? like, press conference. Yeah, that, yeah. What is he going to do? Well, I, I think there is – is there internal competition for guys pushing through? Where yes, like there's two guys in the minors that aren't playing. Pelche and Coronado aren't even up, and they're supposed to be relied on, I think, to be pretty integral moving forward. The challenge is the blue line, where it's Tanov and Hannafin is two free agents, and Shillington's played one game. Uh, 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 that's a tough guy to, to say, oh, he's going to be. like you, you're That's just why that's playing. Goal. If, and there's no one else that I think can do anything close to top four minutes. You can have come guys playing five, six minutes, but there's no one else that can play top four right now. For me, it's a, a handcuff situation because if that Bowen Byram, I think he's a hell of a player, and I think he's a he would be a great fit for a blue line here in Calgary. But I just wonder why, why is Colorado talking with trading this guy? Like they know more than anyone else. This is a little weird. I don't think you're. Yeah, we're we've got the cart in front of the horse. They're not looking to trade yeah. him. I don't. I, don't think, so, I think what it is is there's been chatter as to if Colorado is going to be serious and try and get a second line center. Yeah, you know something like that because they're dealing. Yeah, that's the position of strength for the Colorado Avalanche. They right. can get rid of Byram and not really get roasted that with because they got those other guys there already. Yeah, and, that that's. I think it's more like that's a a really shiny trade chip. Yeah. Right. Whether Joe Sackick just hangs up the phone when somebody calls, I don't know. I'm not behind the scenes. It's just you hear these rumblings, and you know our insiders are talking about it stuff. So you're like, okay, maybe there is. Maybe people are just calling, going. Hey, he's, you know, is he available? You know, Bowen Byram's had some injury issues as a young player. So that would be a red yeah. flag. But, you know, Pinder, coming back to what you're saying, if D is at a premium and they don't have much coming through, doesn't that make Hannafin more attractive to keep? 
Yeah, he's the youngest, and he he creates the hardest thing to replace. Um, yeah, it's hard to imagine his minutes going to someone that's here right now. It's a lot. Right. We've gone back Especially and forth. for trading Tanev. On Hadifin so often it's over the last couple of years. Like, what, what does he do well? Is, do you do anything well? And then you come back. God, he skates really well. What has he, he done well this year? a lot of year. minutes. Well, he's put some points up. To he's go along he's been all. awesome. Like he's yeah. he's the one guy. That, like, well, there's not that many, but you're thinking Lindholm's going to have a great contract. Hannafin's having a great contract oh. here. Yeah, and and God love Chris Tanev. I love him. I just I wish he was 28. Yeah, 26. Yeah. He's not totally right. That's but, the thing because they've already traded away Zadorov and haven't really replaced him. Even, even there's a guy named Dennis Gilbert. He's a yeah. he's not playing right now. So you've got a lot of guys. It's Nick D. Simone and, and Osterley, some guys that Soloviov, Kuznetsov, really playing, yeah. playing too many minutes. It gets thin. Even, I mean, yeah, it gets thinner for sure. But that's, yeah. you know, that's where Connie, you know, he's got to be either creative or the team that is, put it way, this way, if the team that is coveting these players, Connie can replace it. If, if he decides, you know, I'm going to move Lynn home to Team X, but I'm going to move Tanev to another team. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to grab a, a defenseman from this team and, and a forward from like, you, you've got to mix and match. And it doesn't have to, not all of them have to be live bodies. If you do have kids pushing through that deserve to be on the roster. Well, who can, I, this feels like something you guys should know. Who's got no move clauses and can say no to a move. And we talk about signing guys. It ain't up to Connie, yeah. right? Like if if Hannafin and Lindo are going, well, I'm not signing. And Hannafin's got an eight team. Tanev's got a ten team. Those are no trades. Yeah, but there's but Lindy's they, got no trade protection, so you yeah. can send them wherever you want. But us saying we have to sign Hannafin, which I think they should. I if they could get him signed, I think they should. He's played well enough. He's young enough. And I think if it doesn't work out down the road, he's an asset you could still move to get pieces whenever you want. Because If the salary's right, yeah. Yeah. You're the worst because you always say the salary has to be right, but then the salary cap's going up, so the salaries aren't going to hurt. No, I, I, I agree with you, right? Like, he's the safest of the three to sign, but that doesn't mean he gets a blank check. Like, at what number no. do you say no? This is the tough well, spot for Connie, well, right? Well, it's well, not Andrew, saying we'll commit to him. It's at well, what well, number is like, oh, that's too much. Now I can't trade him down there. I don't know. What number would make that blue toque pop right off your head? <laughs> Anything seven and a half? I don't like. Like he's nowhere near what Devin Taves is, and Taves got but you less can, than that. And but that you always say it's a Taves Tave signed win, and now it's like everything. He signed a couple months ago, Rhett, and it was but in Colorado. Is, did, and he's a did better Taves. Dude. Is is that a fair comparable? Did like that's a great deal for Colorado, quite likely. It right? is like, yes, and they do great Manly deals. So can you compare? Literally. Can you compare every deal to? A terrific deal that's been signed. I, I don't no, know. I just think if you're giving him seven and a half, it's an overpay. That's all. I mean, I think it's close. I mean, could well, you live with seven? Yeah. Oh, I'd love seven. So we're getting there, right? The the other thing too is, and I know this people don't want to hear this, but like, you know, Canadian market, Calgary tax, Calgary, like it's it, I, I say it, but I you guys know I love Calgary. I've spent so much time there. I grew up in Edmonton, played junior in Lethbridge. Like I'm an Alberta boy through and through. Alberta's not for everybody. Like that's the thing. If you're making, if you're putting your hand up, it's the coldest yeah. place on the planet. Three days I, ago, I know. Isn't Hannah an American kid? Right? He's from Boston, Boston, Boston area. Yeah. Yeah. Now Boston gets cold in that. But I, again, you you look at some of these things. I call them cold weather tax or you know market tax. Like Ottawa has to pay that. Winnipeg has to pay that. Edmonton has to pay that. Now Edmonton could sell the Golden Goose right now. But they haven't. They that, should be. Well, they should be. You're right. <laughs> they got three more years of Kane at five plus. What are they doing? Make them yeah. play for free to play with McDavid. Yeah, but at, but at the end of the day, like Calgary, you might have to, you know, if it, if you if you feel like Hannafin's a six million dollar defenseman or six and a half, it might be a million dollars more to play in Calgary just based on you. It, it, and we had a free agent that wanted to stay here. You got to sell that narrative too. That's the way I would look at it is this guy wanted to be here. He had options. We were going to trade him, but you know what? He made the commitment. Yes, we've given him a lot of money, but at the end of the day, he's made the commitment to stay with our organization, which, you know, Jonathan Huber will sign that deal without even playing a uh, a second for the Flames, but, you know, it was 10 and a half million. So 
there you go. At what number do you say no is kind of the question I'm asking. I'm not saying yeah. don't do it. I'm just saying where do you get worried about it? And for me, it's around seven and a half. I th but you know what? You, and you mentioned it there. It's probably one of those things where you start to kind of parse it out and say, well, if I if I like seven, am I that ups upset with seven and a half? And then it's if close, it's seven, right? seven point six, seven point seven, uh, well, you're getting close to eight now, and I don't sure don't like eight. I, I don't know. I, I'm with you. If you've got a guy that would that wants to be here, that you're impressed and happy with his play, you like the guy. The guy's willing to stay. We'll call it Alberta, Canada, Calgary tax, whatever it is. I'd rather it's the devil, you know. I think I'd rather spend that money on on Hannafin then get that money back, whatever it is, five, 4.9, I think he makes per year. And going to July 1, looking to looking for a guy that can play those minutes and no, play that well yeah. no. and for are 7 gonna, million. I don't I, know. I, I, and it gets it. We go a million round this clock a million times on this. But if you're letting him go and you don't have guys to fill that spot, you've got that open, then sell everyone, which I'm fine with too. Yeah. It's true. Right? Like, like if you're going to sell Hannafin, everyone else has to go because you're it. not going to be good enough. <laughs> no, right, yeah. right. Like you're cutting and not your everyone, off. but the free agents, right? Yes, move everyone and get assets, and that's fine. And go a little bit younger and see what happens. Totally cool. I'm fine. And this with is it. what's so hard about this. Like, serve the master of make playoffs, but also serve the master of get younger and retool. Like this is a to really, serve the really master. The, I think to serve the master, the only move you can make is that Lindholm one and a Tanev one. You know, and if Vladar played, he played pretty good last night. If he can become an asset for you and move him and have Wolf come up, but you're not going to be able, I don't think, and I think that's what's going to have to happen. I think that's the mandate from above will be, well, you can make some moves, but in no uncircum terms yeah. are you allowed to empty the barrel and start yeah. from scratch. Like you're yeah. this, you're two points out of a playoff spot. We're not throwing in the towel. Yeah. And you, I'll would tell you, expect, what, you would expect Wolf and some of the players that come up to help bridge that gap and yep. keep them right there and keep yep. them competitive right down the stretch. Rhett brought this up yesterday, and you're a goalie, so I'm I'm preaching to the choir here. But uh, we all went down to Phoenix for the game on Thursday against the Coyotes, and Markstrom was great. And then I slid over to Vegas to watch that game, and I was telling the guys, I've been to Vegas a few times now. I've never seen the crowd that out of a game. Rhett mentioned it yesterday. There's something about when you know your goalie is on and when he's playing great, you just play with a little bit more swag. Rhett used the, the term light. Like they were making plays. They were moving the puck around. They they were having fun. It looked like it was kind of a scrimmage out there. It's the And it, it's twofold. Being in that crowd, you could tell that the Flames knew Markstrom was on and so did the Golden Knights. It felt like we're just not going to score in this guy. And then Anderson pissed the puck away and they scored – on, on a pretty little, on, on, on a giveaway. But outside of that, Markstrom, Markstrom was, was near perfect. You weren't going to beat him that night. And the further along we go, you just remember, like you say, you remember Bobrovsky and what he did, or just what any goalie does when you get into the playoffs and half, we, we watch number one seeds. You think they're going to cruise. And a lot of times those number one seeds have a hell of a time doing it. It is very much the age of get in, chip in a chair. Get yeah. us in Seattle there. Seattle beat Colorado last year, fellas. Seattle let's, beat Colorado. Right? Let's scrap Anything it now. out. I just can't believe we're having this conversation. I don't know what happened last year with Markstrom. I don't know what's going on this year, but they're two different guys, completely different guys in that crease. He, you know what? It's conf like confidence is a drug. And if you like, you, you, you get it. And it's like, I watch, I like, I come back. I'm, I'm doing these Ottawa games right now. They, they, they're, they they're a, immature <laughs> fragile team yeah. and, opposite, I, and I, yeah. I i it hurts my soul because watching brady kachuk i love that man like he is he's an animal he's an unbelievable player timmy stutzla just turned 22 jake sanderson is a superstar in my opinion they've got some pieces there that are going to be bargains at eight million dollars a year for the next six seven eight years but it's they're going through the process so I look at them last night. They're up four, two on Colorado. Oh yeah. And it's like Colorado is in like flex their muscle yet. Like it was just, you know, uh, McCarr played 30 minutes the night before and he was kind of like, nah, you know, 
Am I in this one or not? And then he just makes a you know little play here, little play, you know, ranting and just decides I'm gonna nobody's gonna get near the puck with me. McKinnon turns it up like they just flex their muscle, and and you could see if if there if this was a balloon, the air was coming out of it. Like it was just and you and I felt bad because you're like I said to our producer on the talk back at four three. I said I I'm worried because you could see it come. So you you talk about Markstrom. Same thing. I've been around goaltenders. You know, Rhett, you saw Kipper. Our team played so much different with Kipper in the net compared to McLennan. You knew exactly. Like the drop-off was, and honestly, my best game, believe me, I was proud of my career, all of that. But Mika Kippersoff was a special player. And there, it's rare that there are special players in that position nowadays. Markstrom is a top-tier goaltender. He has the top tier talent, six foot six, good feet, good glove hand, handles the puck, has a good demeanor in the net. Like he checks a lot of boxes. Yes, he's, he didn't play well last year. And, you know, in Vancouver, he was their MVP for two years, came, mm-hmm. had an off year, then was, was brilliant with Daryl, uh, was Vesna finalist. Like goaltending's a fickle position, but I look at the raw skill. Markstrom's as, you know, he's one of the top tier guys. So when they have that force field around them, you're like, it doesn't matter what, what we're doing in front of him. This guy's going to give us a chance. And that's what I'm seeing out of Markstrom right now. I've told this story before numerous times over the years. We're I'm playing in Buffalo. I got traded to Buffalo. It's 1999. We're playing Ottawa in the first round. And that Ottawa lineup had oh, everyone. Yeah. Alfredson, Hose, uh, the Havlet. It, it was l- deep and good. And I can remember sitting in the room in Ottawa before game one. Looking around in the dressing room, getting putting the skates on, going from player to player, going, Holy shit, like we're hooped. Like, how are we even in the same uh, spot as these guys? Like, what, how are we going to beat these guys? And on, I, honestly, it was like it's in a movie in my head. I'm scanning the room, scanning the room, scanning the room, and oh, yeah, that guy, <laughs> that guy. That's how we're going to do it. And I was looking at Hashik, And the whole room knew that's how we were going to do it. And I think in the first game, he made 42 saves. Yeah. Like, it's infectious. And it's it, it's what you just said. The confidence comes. Look around the room. You're like, how the fuck am I going to? Like, how are we going to shut these guys? Oh, yeah. This yeah. guy. He real good. But you, you, you can see it. Now, and I'll go back even watching that Euler team the start of the year. They couldn't get a save. They couldn't get yeah. anything. And you could just see the bench just sag. Play you different. Could, you could see benches sag when they don't trust what's going on in, in between the pipes. Like, it's like, we can't. And it's almost like there's like that unwritten rule. They look at each other on the bench, go, guys, we can't. We got to play a safe game here. We can't, we can't you know, play a high-risk game. We got to. We got to give up 15 shots tonight, and that might not even get it done if you don't trust what's going on in between the pipes. Believe me, I've seen that look. I've witnessed it. I've been that look. I've, I've, I've nowadays when I'm in between the benches, I can see the, the, the sagging, and it, and it's, it's an unwritten thing. But I don't know how many teams like goalies are going to give up goals. It's the timely saves. Like you just know, hey, I, I, I give up a bad chance at goalie. He's there for me. Now I go and relax and play. I don't know. I, I don't know how many. Even the times. emotion, even the emotion of it, noodles. You know what it's like. You're on the bench, and there's a slight turnover. It's not even a bad play, but the other team has just above average scoring opportunity because of it. Yeah. And your whole emotion and your whole demeanor as a team and as a person is different when you've got a Vesna caliber goalie in net as opposed to just a regular goalie. Yeah. Regular goalie. Holy. <laughs> you're, you're, you tighten up, and there's yeah. like you you expend energy worrying about and it. Hold your a, breath, going. Yes. Are we going to get a save here on a routine shot? Yeah. Then you then the guys on the ice are like, they're feeling it too. So subconsciously, they're like, I got to clear the puck immediately because if I leave it laying around, so then you don't make the play that's there. You just get the damn thing and, and clear it, and then the snowball starts. And instead of playing the game, you're just. Uh, yeah, exactly. playing like a 44 used to. So you need you need to give us the the punchline last night because you didn't give us it, Noodles. The, the the Sens were up four two. What was the final score against Colorado? Seven four for Colorado. Oh. 
Worst lead in hockey. That's uh, five unanswered if you need help with math. Well, there was an empty netter. So, you know, but. Well, that's still a goal. Yeah. Yeah. It's still a (laughs) goal. But if if you're up 4 2 and there's an empty netter, it should be yours, right? We're we're on the same page there. (laughs) I don't know if you guys remember the Louis Domingue got thrown into the playoffs in that quadruple, like, overtime. Wasn't he with the Rangers? And I think they threw him in there. And he. They asked him afterwards, he did a walk-off. I think it was against Pittsburgh. And they said, like, you know, were you nervous? Did you were you guys eating? And he said, We had the spicy pork and beef or whatever. Yeah. Like the, pork and broccoli. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Spicy pork and broccoli. Not the best. And he goes, Not the best. Not the best. That's, that's what I was watching last night. That's at 4-2 and then 4-3 and then 4-4, 5-4, 6-4. Four, 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 four. I'm like, ah, oh, this is Louis Domingue. Not the best. Jeez. So what what does the uh what does the color analyst do in those situations to kind of spin the positive narrative? Well, honestly, like there was a, there was one game in Vancouver just before I came to Calgary, they were losing five, nothing, 17 minutes into the game. You turn the, you turn the broadcast into a podcast. You just start talking about anything because if people are watching, like think of this, if you're in Ottawa, and you're stayed up to watch that. It's a Vancouver 7.30 start. That's a 10.30 start. And you're down five Cobb <laughs> 15 minutes. The people that are still hanging around to watch, you got to entertain them. And and believe me, that we haven't had a podcast game in a while where, where it's been a blowout, where you just start talking about the weather and talking about other stuff because you're like, you can't, you can't break down all these plays. Last night, the Sens were up, literally. What is going on? Is that a blizzard? Yeah, they have. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of travel bans going on. In the I was going to say it's a travel ban. I saw one of the play-by-play guys. He's like, I'm not sure if we're going to have the uh, the Did Sabers game tonight because we're not allowed well, to it travel. Got postponed? Didn't you just see the email? It Did just it come got, out? Yeah. Yeah, got postponed. So could have moved anywhere, right? Yeah. Buffalo, eh? You're yeah, on mute, exactly. there, Retro. Exactly. Oh, I sorry. I just yeah. uh, you said weather, so I had to show the weather. No, yeah. but but that's the stuff. Like you. For the most part, it's been very competitive, but it's, you know, a, a game like that, like Colorado just, and they were in a back-to-back situation. You knew they were pissed off. They'd lost in Montreal the night before. You're like, okay, they're going to be in one tonight. And they found a way. They played this guy, Eustace Ananen. Mm. Ananen, it's his like fourth career game. And of course he stands on his head. So <laughs> I saw only him. Only four noodles, only four. Yeah, yeah, he only gave up four and stood on his head. But, you know, that's the game. So yeah, that. I, I didn't want to bury the punchline there or, you know, but I just, uh, it was a rough night, 7-4. So we'll see how it goes against Montreal tomorrow. I'm flying back to Ottawa and doing that game tomorrow. Makes those young guys tougher, makes the broadcasters tougher too, Noodles. You're Ready. a better man for it, right? When when things finally turn around and the Senators are winning all these games, it's these, uh, it's these tough times that uh, you'll look back on and really now be able to enjoy the games. Well, I, I'm glad that we've solved the life's problems for the Calgary Flames in the 45 minutes I've been here. Well, yeah. Conroy doesn't do anything. He tunes into the show and just follows our lead. So he will, yeah. yeah. If you ever need him to accomplish something, just just hide him right now. Yeah. You don't even have to call him. Yeah, yeah. We he's we got him on speed dial. He's been tuning in exactly. But honestly, there is lots of work to be done. But it, you know what you. The more they win, you're almost dealing from a position of strength. You can you can hold on. You can kind of – like, I, I like this. I think, it, you know, that's what the focus should be is that Sharon Povich and guys like that, Zari and <laughs> – is that his name? Sharon Govich, yeah. You're close. Govich. G- what did I call him? Maria Sharon Yeah, Maury Povich. Yeah, Maury Povich. Maury Povich. Yeah. Yeah. Maury Povich. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I do play do by – get Maria here? <laughs> I do call her. It's her on the power play. That's why – that's why I. That's why you, you want those guys to be like. I'm not. I don't want that guy to touch the puck tonight. Yeah. And of course, he scores the OT winner. And that was a rocket of a shot. Like that. That kid could shoot the puck. Yes, yep. he can. So, yeah. yeah. Good for him. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out more of our content right here on the Flames Nation YouTube page. We had a bunch of great long form interviews. You can check out some videos we've done as well outside of the studio. And of course, if you want more writing or merchandise stuff, flamesnation.ca or nationgear.ca. Appreciate you watching.